the dimension that the ancient Indian teachings call the fourth state. A dimension from where you can be aware what your mind is doing without being totally trapped in what your mind is doing. You can be aware of the flux of your emotions without being totally trapped inside your emotions. A dimension that you can sense within yourself as the inner space in which everything happens. The spaciousness in which you are perceiving this room in which you hear this voice. How is it possible for this moment to take on this particular form, this room, this voice? What are the ingredients of this moment? Your sense perceptions, auditory, visual, your th thinking mind, if thoughts are there. If there are no thoughts, even better. If you can be just here in a space of simple, aware presence, then that is the awakened state. It's as simple as that. And if you can be aware of the kind of thoughts that your mind is thinking, there it says this, and then it says that, then you're halfway there. The process has begun of disidentification from the self-talk in the head. <laughs> and that is why we are here and the whole afternoon is about that, is getting in touch with that dimension. And some of you may be in it and come out of it and then go back in it. As you sit here, you may suddenly go off into some kind of dream world, which is thinking, identification with thinking. Or you may get into some emotional field, may suddenly come up, restlessness and nervousness, you start twitching. And then suddenly, oh, where am I? Here, now. Okay. And you become familiar with the qualitative difference between the thinking state and the state of clear, aware presence. Enormous difference in vibrational frequency. And then your ability to think clearly gets enhanced when a lot of that compulsive and useless thinking gradually subsides. So it's not that you can't think anymore, wouldn't that be great? You can't think anymore, nor is it that you fall to a level that is below thinking. No, we don't want to go there. In that case, it's better to be in agony and thinking. You can find peace relative to thinking. Yes, you can find some peace if you go towards unconsciousness. For example, you find it when you get very tired, very tired, and then you hit the pillow and you know how wonderful it feels just for a moment. You can still feel, oh, it feels so good. You're going to both sleep. You're falling, this is not presence. You're falling below thinking. You're going towards that beautiful state of dreamless sleep where you become one with the source, you link into the source, but you don't know it. 
You can only know it briefly as you're going towards it. So those few seconds or minutes when you lie down very tired, you're not thinking anymore. Even the most problem-ridden person there can find a moment of peace halfway towards sleep, a moment of no longer being that heavy mind-made person with its continuous, mostly useless mind activity, me and my problems. And then as you go to sleep, and then very soon you disappear into the vortex. But you don't know it anymore. Then a few times you come out of it a little bit during the night, you go dreaming, rapid eye movement. Even my dog dreams, as you, cats, dogs, you observe how they dream, they twitch. And then you go back into dreamless sleep. And then in the morning you wake up and you again have a moment where you still have some conscious sensing of the intensity of aliveness, of beingness, of the, that dreamless state. You, start, you still, as you wake up, you open your eyes and for a moment it feels good to be alive. And there's an intense sense of aliveness and peace, but not a, not a dead, lifeless, an intensely alive peace. Ah. And then perhaps the mind says, that was good, I had a good night's sleep. And then the mind carries on talking. And a minute later, you are immersed again in the self-talk in which you will then spend the rest of the day. And everything the mind comes up with matters absolutely. It's important. <laughs> Every thought pretends to be absolutely important and absolutely right. There's a righteousness about every thought. It wants to be heard. This is how it is. <laughs> Let me tell you how it is. I know it, I can... Possessed by thought, normal state. <laughs> 